momentum. Why is this word such a dangerous and controversial word? Why is the M word so dangerous? What are we missing? But most importantly, no, 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 no. do Sonic fans really want momentum or is it something else? Here's my plugs and let's continue. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit serious about this topic of momentum. Not just momentum of Sonic Frontiers, Sonic Adventure, 2D games, or any other games that have momentum, because I'm not talking about an individual game. This talk about momentum has been the most talked about and controversial subject for the past forever, especially with the recent Sonic Frontiers. This topic is once again coming up, but I notice everyone is just talking about momentum and kind of missing the bigger picture. What do you mean by that? This video is going to wrap around this quote, and I'm going to say this so you guys can understand. You guys just don't miss momentum. Y'all miss level design complementing momentum. Now you might say, what do you mean? We only care about momentum. Do you really? What's the point of having momentum for a game if most of the game is just flat lands? That so-called momentum would not be very useful. Just for a reminder yet again, I'm not saying Sonic Frontiers is bad. I am just bringing up a common discussion. Don't make me tap the sign. Although I still understand the reason why people would like to have momentum in Sonic games is because it makes you feel like you have more control than you already have. It's awesome to go extremely fast because of your own skill or achieve massive jumps because of your knowledge of the levels or just overall like the feeling of the power of gravity take control of the blue rat. It's amazing and honestly Honestly, the only time you can do something similarly close to that is only the classic games in Sonic Adventure 1 and a little bit of Sonic Adventure 2. However, that still adds something. A lot of people say we haven't had momentum since Sonic Adventure 2, which is completely not true. Sonic Unleashed has momentum and no one's talking about that. Sonic Generation has momentum and Sonic Frontiers has momentum. Although I feel like people are overestimating their momentum in Sonic Frontiers because it's the hot topic at the moment. Poor guys, they, they, they just released a Forces patch, man. The added momentum! What? Although, even if these games have momentum, why do people talk more highly about these games than the boost era of Sonic games? They have momentum, so why does it feel so empty? Well, the most common answer is the fact that these games has the boost, and honestly, that isn't really the main reason why, but it's still a good answer. But the true answer is the level design. Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Generations are mostly known to have linear level design and obviously don't have the main focus of using the skill of momentum to beat the stages. Maybe the beginning of the tutorial level of Sonic Unleashed, but that's kind of a stretch. Although Sonic Frontiers is different, it's not linear like the other boost games, but it still feels like it falls under the same boat with Unleashed and Generations. I would like to say this, level design is not really helping with the addition of the butcher momentum, although that still doesn't make Frontiers a bad game. When you look at Kronos Islands or the Volcano Island, you don't really think about momentum. And a lot of people have noticed that too, that this place is a little bit flat. So when you look at these islands, you think about fast platforming because of the amount of obstacles. And to me personally, this is still awesome. Sonic Adventure 1 and Sonic Adventure 2 level design literally revolves around momentum and a little bit of platforming. And most importantly, unlike Sonic Frontiers, is not filled with a bunch of dash panels. Clearly Sonic Frontiers isn't focused on momentum. This isn't something like Sonic GT. However, However, Sonic has proven many a times in the past that Sonic games can be good without the focus of momentum, like Heroes, Unleashed, and Generations. And wait 10 more years and people are going to grow a soft spot for Sonic Lost World. The adventure games really doesn't have a lot of automation, and remember, when I said freedom is kind of what helps with momentum, especially when it's done right and having the main focus of level design to focus on momentum, because before that, Sonic games didn't always have boost pads and uncontrollable segments. Of course, there were still set pieces here and there, but come on, it felt cool controlling this little rat. Although, here's the difference between adventure stages and post Sonic Unleashed stages to the recent Sonic Frontiers. Now just think, I know the adventure games are dramatically graphic outdated nowadays, but you notice on Emerald Coast that there is a section that's just flat and curved, almost where you can have fun or just experiment with the momentum. When you run up the wall, you notice you dramatically get slower, but when you go from top to bottom, you get faster. You might have not noticed it, but your brain sure did. This is just a tutorial level without telling you it's a tutorial level, because plenty of times in the future, the back of your mind is debating if I have the speed to go up this wall or not, including that there is a lot of downward spirals in this game, or just steep places to run across. 
across. Like I say again, you didn't notice it, but your brain sure did. And this is just Sonic Adventure 1, and this is peak momentum level design, because they figured out what worked with the classics and stuck it into 3D. Although, let's do a twist, and let's talk about Sonic 06. Come on now, dawg. This game is infamous for not having momentum, so why you mention this game at all? Well, because this game secretly falls into the same boat with the adventure games, having the thought of momentum. Just a reminder of people who forgot the reason. I am talking about how we don't entirely miss momentum, but having the levels based around momentum than just momentum itself. Although still, it's still not quite as drastic as any of the other games that I mentioned, but you can still see it. With having you run on walls and a lot of inclines in this game, I assume that they were trying to have momentum until they ran out of time, but still, congrats, y'all still made good level design. And if you don't believe me, literally watch any gameplay of Project 06 and it still kind of proved my point. Of course they still have flat lands like almost every Sonic game, but you can still see a drastic change, making otherwise drastic jumps basically impossible with their previous 06 into reality into Project 06. One of my favorite sections is aquatic base, when you're avoiding the lasers. Just go into a ball and just let gravity take its course. It's amazing feeling, more of that please. And we do. Soliana Forest is kind of forgettable in terms of the game and it has more opportunities and momentum than any other level in the game, with broken trunks on the trees giving a sharp decline, the roots hovering over the water giving a good small speed boost when on them, the grind rails aiming down. The problem is the fact that people don't see that because you're carrying this princess in your arm the entire time, so you can't really roll into a ball. Although still, this game has a lot of dash panels because mostly of the terrible controls of the original game, but that still doesn't excuse my point. I got one more game to mention and it focuses more on momentum than any other game I've mentioned before, and that is Sonic Speed Simulator. I want to do a little test and let's say which game focuses more on momentum, Sonic Speed Simulator or Sonic Frontiers? Now again, I'm not dissing Sonic Frontiers, it's just an example. But if it ain't obvious, Speed Simulator is focusing on momentum drastically. With steep hills, manual jumps, just random ramps, grind rails that are facing down, it's awesome! Do you guys remember that we thought that this was gonna be Sonic Frontiers level design? Yeah, we were kinda overestimating Sonic Frontiers. I knew it was fake! I knew it! Although, it's still awesome. However, this is a positive and a negative. Yeah, it's awesome to have the freedom on momentum and control, but once you get fast enough or too fast, controlling the blue rat feels terrible. And this isn't just for Speed Simulator, it's for almost all the 3D momentum games. Or just almost every Sonic game that has really fast speed. That's why I kinda understand why the momentum in Sonic Frontiers feels limited to the drop dash and the grind wheels, because you already have the boost to help you with speedy jumps. Literally this clip of so Kami Johnny explains it all. You ever f find yourself sometimes getting caught up in the momentum? Yes. And you just careen into a pit because you just lost control of yourself. What Not Sonic fuck? King. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and good night. Although we looked at post era Sonic, and what about the future? So what about Sonic Unleashed? Sonic Generations? What about Sonic Frontiers? Since this is the closest related to adventure level design, why doesn't it look and feel like momentum isn't a big factor even though it's been slightly proven that it does exist, but more in a butchered way, but it still exists. Now again, I have to remind people, this isn't me saying the game is bad. Everyone is amazing in their own way even you sonic forces Sonic Frontiers is obviously not focused on momentum like people want to admit. Because there's a hill in this game doesn't mean the level design is focusing on momentum. If so, almost every open world game is focusing on momentum. However, one of the main things is the fact that there isn't a lot of good opportunities on momentum in Sonic Frontiers, or just having a good reason for that. Because honestly, when you're on the ground, most of the lands are just flat. We don't see any ramps, steep hills you can run on, and most importantly, you can't really spin dash. But when you're in a ball, it's mostly reliant on yet again the momentum. And again, the level design of the islands isn't smooth enough for such a thing. That's why you see a lot of people complaining that Sonic is just sticking onto the ground. Like I said before, it doesn't matter if Sonic Adventure graphically is outdated, but having the terrain smooth is integral for smooth transition into momentum. Sonic 06 does it, but not Sonic Frontiers, because you know why? Sonic Frontiers is not a momentum game, and I can accept that. Mario Odyssey and Mario 64 has better momentum than Sonic Frontiers, but it's still considered 
considered one of the best platformers ever made because the level design is good and it follows the tradition of Mario level design. Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Generations still have better momentum than Sonic Frontiers, but it's obviously masked by the boost. But we don't complain about it because it's high speed platforming with awesome level design and awesome set pieces. And it still follows the traditional Sonic level design. Now, don't lie, we all said this to ourselves at least one time. I wish they did boost gameplay and open world. Newsflash Sonic Frontiers is here. Sonic Frontiers might look different, but it still follows good level design. Sonic 3 and Knuckles has a lot of slow platforming, but it's still considered one of the best Sonic games ever made. Sonic Frontiers, even if it's not focusing on momentum, it still follows the same rules of speed, action, and fast platforming. And honestly, that's all that matters. I think momentum in Sonic games is a privilege, not a right. It would be awesome to have momentum in a Sonic game, but just because a game doesn't have momentum doesn't ruin the nature of a Sonic game. And it's still being proven today. And even if a Sonic game has momentum, doesn't automatically make it a good game. Level design is the most important for a Sonic game, not momentum. Come on, man. Are you crazy?